Good morning and welcome to Thriving Survivors, Survivors Voices Live. So for those of you who are tuning in or maybe catching up later, our Survivors Voices campaign only has one week left. So a week tomorrow, the consultation closes. So this week, we're going to be doing quite a few lives with survivors and catches up with the team just to um, spread the word and ask that survivors are watching or catching up fills in the consultation. So today we're doing a live with Wendy, who is a survivor, and she's going to be telling us her story. So we're just waiting for her to come on live just now. And while we're waiting, um, I'll give you a wee update as to where we are. So the consultation went live on the 28th of February and um, it runs for one month. The consultation effectively is a, um, oh, here's Wendy now. Yep, so the consultation effectively is a questionnaire for survivors to fill in in order to give their opinion on restorative justice. So let me just get, you can see she's joining us. Hi, Rachel and Catherine. Hi, how are you, Wendy? Sorry, there's a bit of technical issues there. I didn't know how to actually join. <laughs> That's okay, no worries at all. It's always that fear, that first one. It's like, am I going to press the right button? <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Um, so like you, we've both got our kids watching TV with full access to the snack cupboard so we can do this today. So anyone watching, if kids run in, just please ignore they'll be running about the background. <laughs> um, so Wendy, I was just giving everyone a wee update there as to what Survivor's Voices is. Uh, it's a consultation um, that survivors can fill in to give their opinion on restorative justice. And this will be used in the future to, to shape what restorative justice looks like in Scotland. So it is really important. It's not just a questionnaire in order to get their opinion. It's actually going to be used and it's valuable. So Wendy, you've agreed to come on today to share your story with us as a survivor. So yeah, first of all, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to be involved in Survivor's Voices? Yeah, so uh, do you know, I wish I'd have brushed my hair now. <laughs> but, um, oh, don't worry, I just tried mine back really quickly there. <laughs> um, so uh, as I'd mentioned the other day, um, for anyone that doesn't know, I was a victim of a crime a number of years ago and I've engaged with um, a whole host of services since. Um, now in a position where I want to try and give back, try and give people a voice and Honestly, just by pure coincidence, stumbled across Survivor's Voices on Instagram, actually. Um, only Actually, only a few weeks ago. And I had um, found out that they were, you know, taking part in this consultation and looking for voices from people essentially just like me. Um, so since then, I've been engaging in the, the information sessions, um, the live panel sessions, and met with, you know, a great bunch of people. Um, so, you know, as I've mentioned the other day, it, it was a pure chance, just a pure chance, but um, I think the timing is always right for things. And for me, this has been an incredible time to get involved in something that I feel so passionately about. And, you know, I say I feel passionately about it, but it was something that I didn't know a great deal about a few months ago. Um, so it's just all kind of fitted in together like a jigsaw I guess and it's been um, great. Yeah do you know I'm the same when I came on board to help with this consultation I didn't know a lot about restorative justice. I'd heard of it, I'd heard the term but I didn't know a lot at all so it's definitely a learning curve. So Wendy are you willing to tell us a bit more about your your story and your experience? Um, yeah so I'm not going into much detail um, because the kids are about, but um, yeah, yeah. The victim of crime um, a number of years ago, um, a sexual a crime of a sexual nature, and um, as I say, I've engaged with a number of services since. Um, do you know? I, I then um, went to uni and studied a degree in criminal justice because following that experience, I had a massive distrust in. Um, do you know essentially just a distrust in the criminal justice system and I thought I can use my lived experience to change that um, it's obviously I'm a needle in a haystack and it's been a bit uh, harder than what I anticipated 
But that is where, you know, the opportunity that Survivor's Voices is given has been absolutely incredible. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it is a life-changing opportunity. Um, and I, I'm honestly so, so grateful to be on board. I think it's the first time in all these years since I, since I was a victim of a crime that that really someone has actually cared about, you know, my perspective and where I come from. And I think that's what makes makes this so different and so unique. Um, so does that answer the question? Yeah, definitely. So did you have any um, form of criminal justice at all? Um, I didn't know. There wasn't any prosecution, which is probably where I disregarded restorative justice before because I held this assumption that, you know, there would have to be a conviction. Um, and as we all know, for the likes of uh, crimes of a sexual nature, there is um, underwhelmingly convictions. And I had learned in, in recent times that you don't actually need a conviction to take part in restorative justice, which I think is just incredible. Um, I think there'll be a whole host of questions around how does that, how does that happen if, you know, if you're taking part in restorative justice, there's going to be disclosures made. Um, so it'd be interesting, you know, as this comes out to see more about, you know, what will happen in, in the case where you're sitting down through a, through a restorative justice process and crimes are disclosed. Um, but I think that that's, for me, the biggest thing um, is that there doesn't need to be a conviction. So victims and survivors can still get that opportunity and that for me is incredible. So obviously not having criminal justice, um, is that what makes you, did you get involved with the whole restorative justice plan or idea to discuss it? Just, did you feel that not having one type of justice, there may be another way for you to help heal? Um, absolutely, yeah. And do you know, the, there was a, a counsellor involved in the, the panel sessions the other day that completely put everything into perspective for me. So what she described is that restorative justice gives people an opportunity to sit down with that person where, you know, away from the situation and the scenario and can potentially help them. So, you know, if there's a situation where you might see that person in the street and you don't know how to respond through a restorative justice process, you have already dealt with that fear. Um, and I think, you know, the, the potential of a meeting, I mean, it's a small world we live in when you think about it, yeah. um, the potential for to happen out with that process could be more traumatizing than what it would be for someone to actually sit down in a room and say, you know what, this is that this is how you've made me feel all these years. This is what you've done to me, and um, it is, you know, it's a, an opportunity to do that. It's an opportunity for closure, um, an opportunity for kind of reparation of yourself because I think you can get to a place where um, you know you feel safe going out. So I know for me personally. I avoid going to, you know, a lot of places, um, even even places where family reside. I, I wouldn't visit them because of that potential um, conflict that could happen if I seen the person. So the opportunity to sit down in a safe space um, is just, um, I think it's a, a step in the right direction for many people. Yeah. So obviously right now for sexual abuse or domestic violence, this isn't available in Scotland and that's what... Um, this consultation is partly about in order for survivors to give their opinion and for survivors voices there's not a there's not an ask or there's not there's not trying to put anyone in a certain direction if you if a survivor thinks it is or it isn't for them that's what this is about so um obviously it's facilitated by thriving survivors and it's been funded by the scottish government and it's been named survivors voices because it is 100 percent about the survivors voices so obviously you've talked about this throughout this anyway but what are survivors voices meant for you and is this something because when this first started the panel sessions that you talk about the plan was that there would be a few of them before in order to have survivors actually look at the consultation and the questionnaire before it went live so that it was created by them. Um, but since then, these panel sessions have kept going because they are, they have been so beneficial. So 
what has it meant to you to stay part of it and for these to keep going? And would you see, obviously this contest finishes next, a week tomorrow, but you know, what would it mean to you for it to keep going? Um, for me, it's given me a kind of new lease of life um, because I think for so long, um, with the best will in the world, you know, there's, there's services out there that are excellent and the, the work they do is phenomenal. But there's services that have supported me that don't agree with it. Um, you know, there's people that have supported me that don't agree with it. And the biggest thing for me is what I am saying is, let me make that choice. You know, if, if victims and survivors of domestic and sexual abuse can't be included in a restorative justice process, then the only detriment is to them because you're not allowing them to actually even do it. Um, and I think that, yes, there, there is, um, you know, massive consequences. There's going to be pros, there's going to be cons. But for me, the bottom line is allow them to be a part of of the process should they wish to engage. So, you know, that this could, this could all end in a result where anyone can take part in a disorders of justice process regardless of the crime. And it might be that I decide, you know what, I wouldn't actually want to do that. But for me, that, that is the empowering thing because that is a choice that I have then made. Someone's not made that choice for me. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to give it 100%, you know, taking this forward. And I hope to continue to remain a part of it because it, it has given me a voice um, and a voice that was deep within me that, that is now coming out. That's fantastic. So... Um, obviously our ask for everybody watching this or watching it in catch up is to share one of our posts um, so whether you're watching this just now on Instagram or you're catching up on another platform is to share one of the posts that has the links to the consultation because that's what it's all about we want to the more voices we've had so, such an amazing response so far but the more voices that we hear the bigger picture the clearer the message is be it for or against um, but from you as a survivor and as somebody that's been involved in this, what's your message to you know other survivors about the importance of filling in this questionnaire? Do you know I take the plunge, do it, um, have a look at it. If you need support, there is support there and you can reach out. Um, I think it's so important for your voice to be heard and that is what this is allowing. You know, whether you agree with it or you don't, do you know, fill it out. There's no pressure into agreeing with, um, you know, the way the questions are posed in the questionnaire. There is no requirement to agree with the restorative justice process. But that, you know, we, we still need we still need people's voices, um, regardless of their opinion. And I think that's what's been great about this, um, is that everyone respects one another's opinions. Everyone's came from a different background. I know you could have experienced the same crime, but everyone's got um, different coping mechanisms or has had different experiences thereafter. And every single person will have, to some degree or another, a different opinion and view. So it's important to hear all of those views and, um, you know, it just it will give people a voice. That's amazing. Thank you, Wendy. So, yeah, it's worth noting to everyone that We've got three information sessions left this week. So if you want to learn more before you do the questionnaire or you're an organisation or a company or an individual or a survivor, you can book on for free to any of the information sessions that goes through what restorative justice is, what the consultation is. Um, on absolutely everything, Isabella's email address is there if you need help, if it brings up anything that you want to discuss. There's help there. Um, we have one panel session left on Wednesday and that's live on Facebook at half seven and that's going to be a pretty special one. You're on that as well, Wendy, aren't you, on Wednesday? <laughs> <My face again. laughs> no. um, so yeah, that's great. That's going to be a live event for an hour, potentially an hour and a half. We've got eight survivors on um, and talk now. But the main message, we've got one week left, one week for survivors to fill in this questionnaire and have their voice. So Wendy, thank you so much for giving up your time on a Saturday morning. It's a nice sunny day, so I'm going to let you disappear and play with the kids outside. And well, oh, it's, um, I think the, the sun tends to skip where we live, but no. Oh, I'm no. <laughs> it's not due to last anyway, so you're not missing out on too much. 
<laughs> but thank you so much, Wendy. I'll see you again on Wednesday. And yeah, everyone watching, please share a post or fill in the questionnaire. Thank you. You enjoy your weekend too, Heather. Thanks, Wendy. Bye.